Rejection is an alien to anyone. Getting told no is one of the least desirable circumstances one can wish for. In most circumstances, when evaluating an experience we want to engage in, one of the determining factors we consciously or unconsciously take into account is evaluating how equipped we actually are in that particular situation so to avoid that repulsive feeling of rejection. But, as we all know, however calculated or miscalculated our judgment may be, rejection is completely inevitable. None of us can escape it, and we all most certainly feel it at one point in our lives. But before letting this unappealing approach of preparing for rejection before it's even happened to fully sink in, it is important to note that it's this particular undesirable feeling that emanates as a product of rejection that is in fact the most important indicator of our competence for fulfilling a particular experience. In the past few years, I've found myself in the face of rejection multiple times, with which I began deducing that I was a failure and that I would never get to the places that I wanted to get to. However, looking back now, it was this persistent lump in my throat caused by the rejections I faced within the paths that would lead me to an experience that I wanted to carry out that actually shed light to the unsurpassable wish I had of carrying out these experiences which ultimately allowed me to develop certain characteristics that would precisely allow me to pursue other paths that would eventually lead me to these same opportunities. If anything, these newfound paths not only strengthened my character, but they actually gave way to a larger scheme of opportunities that were initially never thought of before my rejections. During my last academic year, I was eligible to apply for a spot in the exchange program that my school was a part of, along with other selective schools around the international community. Having lived half of my life abroad, I understood the implications that this could have on personal development. So without hesitation, I applied. After a very rigorous application process, surprise, I had been rejected. It was completely devastating, and it stayed with me for months leaving me feeling I had no sense of purpose. It was a mix of anger, confusion, disappointment, you name it. That was until I realized that I'd much rather allow this feeling that predominantly occupied most of my energy to drive my search for alternative paths, rather than pile a feeling of uselessness on top of it. Slowly, I started to connect the resources available to me that could, in some way, lead to an experience similar to the one that I'd had to discard. At the time, I'd been studying French out of personal interest, something that I hadn't connected to my exchange opportunity when originally applying to the program. It wasn't long before I realized I could pursue the possibility of seeking an exchange to France to learn the language firsthand, as had been the case when learning English. After an equally rigorous investigation process, I applied to various schools throughout the country and landed on an international one in Paris. At that point, I was able to ask the school to save my spot for six months and set out to pursue the experience I'd originally wanted to accomplish and fully tackle learning the French language. In that same line of thought, though I could have relied on English to get by, it had been a big aspiration of mine to fully grasp the language, reason why I spent most of my time on the streets practicing. It was completely rough in the worst way possible. Many times people didn't want to repeat to me what they'd said or say it slower, so they ultimately rejected me. They ignored me, walked away, laughed, or yelled at me. But without a doubt, what was most valuable about this experience, apart from being able to live abroad, was that the rejections I faced within the experience fortified my French much more, much faster. By having those atrocious conversations ingrained in my mind, and thus allowing me to grasp the language much faster than if I had continued learning solely through classes. On a less personal note, being the proud Colombian that I am, there was no way that I couldn't add a connection to our excellent coffee in this talk. There are undeniable parallels between nature's behavior and our own. And after investigating the various coffee producing techniques that are used in the Eje Cafetero, the coffee producing region of Colombia, I found that nature's approach to rejection concords to how we should seek to respond to it within opportunities that can affect our future growth. One of the biggest challenges that coffee producers face is the emergence of coffee rust within the leaves that if spread, can quickly diminish a coffee land. Most farmers reject the, the infected coffee plants altogether, cutting them down before they even have a chance to recover, and cutting down five other coffee plants around them just to be safe. 
However, new sustainable techniques have found that by quarantining an infected plant for around three weeks can actually allow the plant to fully recover and become more resilient to future contacts to the disease and other potential threats. It is not about rejecting the unavoidable obstacles that will inevitably arise in the path to success. But it's about allowing these to propel our ambitions even further and allowing these to build a version of ourselves that is more capable of adapting to the barriers that hinder our ability to fulfill the experiences we want to carry out. Based on these experiences, I've come to the conclusion that there are two ways to approach rejection, both based on the presence of that gut-wrenching feeling that arises as a product of rejection. If the feeling is not all-consuming, chances are that the experience that is now unfeasible through this particular path is considered under your own judgment to be unequivocal to an element of gain for you and your personal growth. So in this case, it's best to drop efforts to fulfill this experience and focus your efforts on pursuing other paths that can lead to different experiences. On the other hand, if the feeling produced by rejection is one that profoundly affects the way we manage to move forward, then it is at this point that we must realize that this is an experience that is worth pursuing, as we are challenging the reasons for rejection, proving that we feel equipped enough to hunt for another way to get to this experience. Here, identifying the resources or qualities that we deem fit from ourselves in order to reach these goals or experiences is crucial. By doing so, we not only guarantee that there is now a bigger possibility of completing these experiences, but we also guarantee the possibility of exploring new conditions and new learning opportunities that can contribute an additional element of gain to the experiences we continue to seek out. To paint a simpler picture, imagine going to the kitchen to search for an apple you've been craving since this morning, but finding out that due to not picking up enough at last week's grocery haul, you're all out. But there is a selection of many other fruits that you can choose from. If you're capable of forgetting about the wish you had of eating that apple and can opt for the alternative experience of eating any of the other fruits, then there's no reason to continue looking for a way to consume that apple. However, if the aspiration you have of consuming that apple won't even allow you to consider eating any of the other fruits, then it is at this point that you can utilize the resources available to you to find a way to locate that apple. You can get in the car and drive to a selection of grocery stores until you find that apple that you're looking for. It may not be as comfortable as going straight to the kitchen and picking it out of the fruit basket, but by doing so, you can almost fully guarantee that you'll eventually find this apple. And not only this, but you might end up finding an apple that is even better than the one you'd been searching for back home. One is much brighter and fuller. It is those that learn to cope and embrace the feeling of rejection that hand carve the path to where they want to go to under their own terms. This feeling will ultimately measure our prospective success within opportunities that we wish to carry out by revealing the characteristics that we have within each of us that make us suitable for pursuing these experiences. Those that never face rejection are vulnerable to becoming unadaptable and stagnate the possibility of utilizing their abilities within different environments. Although rejection is not an experience that we should particularly wish for, it without a doubt allows us to pinpoint and orient our priorities towards what we ourselves have been able to confidently determine to pursue. This way, our judgment will surely be calculated and more prepared for the repulsive feeling of rejection that will surely and thankfully return. Thank you.